have today one of my absolute favorite singers and artists. Um, so tell tell us about how uh, yeah, you I'm going to tell you the story. Yeah. So I was around 14, 15 years old, New Year's Eve in the suburbs with my best friend in her basement, and who do I Come see on, on TV? Hi. <laughs> I see Patsy on TV at Welcome like one in the morning family. on Much More Music from New York to LA. And I had never seen you before. And it was my first experience. And I was instantly drawn to you and in love. And then Beautiful. a few years later, because this was before Wikipedia and you didn't have a website and I couldn't find any information hey, on you. Hey, I only have a website as of last <laughs> week. What are you talking about? Exactly. And then I see one day this commercial for Diversité and that you're going to be on the show yeah. and I freak out and I'm so excited. And Diversité was like Montreal Gay Pride for like the yeah. longest time. Exactly. It was yeah. the best. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun and I got there so early because I wanted to be right in front and it was like at 11 <laughs> in the morning, no one there. I'm just a kid from the suburbs. I'm like, where do I go? I'm just wandering around. I and then I that. see you walking. I and I was just like, are you Patsy? And you were. And then you just invited me to tag along to the sound check. And I was just so in awe of you. And I couldn't believe it was happening. And I can't believe you're here. And Thank we're so you. happy it's to have you. Welcome to honor. Chosen Family. Thank you. It means really a lot that you're here. Oh, so come on. You are... A lady on a mission right now. A big mission. So you are in the process. A sixty thousand dollar mission. A sixty thousand yeah. dollar mission. <laughs> you are in the process of raising money to fund the album of your life. Yes, it's called Patty Galant Unsung Songs Debut. So these are songs that you've been writing basically your whole life, yeah, but I've haven't gotten the them. chance to record yet. No, I've kept them a secret actually, because I was afraid that first of all the stuff I write. Uh, people wouldn't like because it's not Sugar Daddy, it's not dance, it's not disco. It was in English, although now I've written a couple of French songs. But I find that the French language is such a beautiful language. Je veux pas le massacrer, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So I want to make sure that what I'm writing in French is going to be, you know, good enough. And uh, in fact, I just started one song. It's going to be a tango, I'm telling you right mm -hmm. now. Wow. It's going to be my first video ever in my Your life. Your first music, music video. Music video. Yeah. Official. Yeah, officially. It's called Tu Me Tu. Ooh. Oh my God. So for Very those direct. English listeners, you translation, me. you kill me. Mm. Yeah. Who kills you? Oh, listen. <laughs> <laughs> so many things that killed me, but I'm still alive. <laughs> it can't be that bad. But, so, Seriously, a man. <laughs> so you've been in this business for 60 years and that's Over, your first yeah. like... Yes, because in those days it wasn't this, you know, when I when I sort of stopped recording, the videos were just coming in. And then, you, you know, of course I went to Paris for 11 years mm. doing musicals, so there was no reason and then sort of my career my own personal career took a back um uh, a back seat. A back seat. And uh, although I don't regret it, I mean, uh, 11 years in Paris doing two musicals, it was awesome. But this is something I feel I have to do now. I have things to say. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's one song that I talk about, La Condition des Femmes. Yeah. Les femmes excisées, les femmes violées, les femmes battues, les femmes divorcées en haine qui sont jetées dans la rue parce qu'ils sont divorcés, ils ne valent plus rien. Um, les femmes soumises. Et, et, et ça a commencé avec... Do, can I speak French? Yeah, you can go, we can yeah, go back go. and forth. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's about, uh, it started with a, a personal thing. And then when uh, I heard about Malala a couple of years mm -hmm. ago, and uh, that thing touched me, that story touched me so much because she got shot in the head because she wanted her, the girls to go to school. Yeah. And she survived, and now she's the first, uh, the youngest Nobel Peace Prize. Well, she's in my song now. I wrote a whole verse on her. And... Um, it ta there's a lot of things. I wrote a song on, on, on Manhattan on 9-11. I write songs about my love and past loves and new loves. I I write. Uh, I wrote a song on my son, who is coming over, by the way, Jason. Amazing. He's coming to see us because he was walking on the street. I said, come on down. Amazing. And uh, he was. He just sang on uh, en Direct de l'Univers de Patti Garant, and he was Awesome. Yeah, I yeah. saw that. You saw it? Yeah. What did you think? I thought it was great. You better say he was good. He was amazing. <laughs> and but what I what was so cool about seeing you on that show is that as soon as you walk out on the show, you have this energy 
that is so palpable. And the energy that you have now, I see that same energy when you look at videos of you from the 60s and 70s. It's younger, the same, right? but it's the Ooh. same energy. Well, you know, it's like, so can, when you see an actor that's been around for a long time and now you know him because he's famous, mm -hmm. go back to what he looked like when he was young. You'll see he does the same things. Yeah. He does the same, the same tic. Right. The same. I think it's inné with that. When you have an energy, when you have an energy, you have it and you always have it. My mother had that. My mother well, it's was the energy uh, and it's the yeah. voice because you did you yeah. did a documentary a few years ago. And, yes, and, and, and it just I saw went on it. again on the Duck Day, and, and it's yeah. really powerful. And oh, it's you, hard though; it's hard. Did, My son's in it too. Did you did you t take care of your voice? Because you still have a people. Crazy I know people ask me that. It's, you should have heard me the other night. Like <laughs> sold out. I know, I'm, it's, it's so much. I'm I'm so thankful. No. It's terrible, but you I didn't don't take do anything. Care of it. No, of course I took you care did. of it. Okay, I didn't okay. do too, too many drugs. Okay, okay. I okay. did a little bit in the seventies. <laughs> I mean, you're a disco queen. Hey, so hey, you hey, seventies. Hey, don't forget. Yeah, but I found out that that was not my thing. That <laughs> right. my drug is my stage. Right. That's what I love the most. Yeah. And I'll tell you when I found out how to take care of my voice when I started Star Mania in Paris. The first year was hell. I was sick all the time. There was pollution in Paris I wasn't used to. I wasn't used to doing eight shows a night. Right. I mean, it's a, a marathon. A week. A week, <laughs> not a night. It felt like a night. It felt like eight shows yeah, a night, yeah. right? Well, it felt like that, yeah. And I found out that there was a way of pacing yourself. And in fact, the less you sing, the better it is. And a little bit of vocalizing before the show, that's it. But I hardly do any vocalizing now. It's like a... It's like it's just it's just there. It's like so. It's like a memory. Right. It's it's so amazing. Sometimes I'm I'm amazed at myself. Right. I've sang, j'ai chanté à travers des pneumonies. Wow. Okay. The only time I can't sing is when I have laryngitis. Right. And if it's a laryngitis <laughs> I mean... that is infected. Right. Uh, but I have documentary... sang through laryngitis to a little bit, wow. so I start like talking like this, you know, <laughs> whatever. Because in a documentary, it says that you're the only performer when you did Starmania in mm -hmm. Paris who yeah. performed. You didn't miss one show in eight and years, and that's incredible. Well, I, I missed, I missed one show. We can't, you know, one <laughs> show. Why? Come on, <laughs> does it haunt uh, but you? You know what? <laughs> it haunts me. Well, you know what they, they used to say? Well, Patsy Galan va le faire. Patsy va le faire. Patsy va le faire. I used to. At, at the first year, we didn't have a double. Second year, we had a double that did the four girls roles okay right. so at one point it was all a girl it was always a girl that was sick right and they said well i i i can't i can't do it tonight you know let patsy do mine <laughs> wow so i ended up doing so that you a lot in, you live with jason in paris at the time oh yeah he yeah, was in Jason's my contract at jason yeah. remington yeah. ford my son he was in my contract. he was eight years old yeah so there was so, watching the documentary that's one one thing that touched me because i'm i'm an only child of a single mom yeah, and that's a really tough. It's tough, but it's really special. It's special it's because we have a very a special, special fusion. Yeah. Me and Jason, when we sing together, uh, we fight all the time, of course, because yeah, I'm still telling him what to of do course, at uh, 32 course, years yeah. old. And, uh, you know, when I tell Jason what to do in the singing and the show business, it's not the artist that's speaking to him, it's his mother. Of course. Yeah. And he doesn't need it. And I still yeah. do it. And I still treat him like a child. I know. I know. <laughs> but but I love him. I love him so much. you sing Rihanna's Stay. Yeah. And it's, you know, we think of this song as a romantic song, yeah. but like a mother and son, I'm sorry, like singing this song to each other. Yeah. Where we know that all you've got in the world is your son and yeah. all he's got in the world is you. Exactly. It's like, like, and I know you, you're, and you're, you, you're, you're almost 70 or. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be 70 years old. That's a, hey, like, seven is a lucky number. Let's, it let's be positive. Okay. Amazing. I'm amazed, but I'm amazed at how energetic and young and loving and loving life and you know you 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 don't did stop did you see me at les dieux de la danse no i have to see that i have to see I that came in, in a, a, yeah. a demi -finale, and you yeah. know what what got them like last year I, yeah yeah this year, is just the, now? the last one just now i lift my leg up to here okay oh my still God. okay now people are very <laughs> impressed with that so it's because i've always done it right you know it's like it's That's an exercise it's a, mu it's a muscle it's like my voice you know And sort of like it become my trademark, yeah. you know. So they got really impressed. I said, "Well, you got nothing else. You use that, you know. So when you don't have a voice, you got yeah, I got the tits. You, you use the tits, you know. Yeah. You got to use whatever you got, right? You got, yeah. If you got it, flaunt it. So, but you, it, it, there's. It, do you feel that you're still that same little girl who was yeah, in the, on the train between Campbellton and Moncton? Yeah. I used to pass a hat. I don't do that anymore. But actually, I'm going to be doing it for sixty thousand dollars. Can yeah, you imagine? Isn't there a strange parallel? There is. You know, I just, I just got it now. Because 
because for those listening who don't know your story, you were born in Campbellton. Yeah. And your mom used to take you and your sisters who sang together as a group, the Gallant we Sisters. We were 10 children and four of us sang. Yeah. And we used to do the train because my father worked on the CNR. He worked on every bridge in Canada. He put his hand on every bridge in Canada, bridging and building, Masson. And then we had, the, on avait les passes free, right. you know? So my mother said, hey. Campbellton, Moncton, Moncton, Campbellton. We'd go back and forth on the train, sing, and Mama would make me pass the hat. Mm. So we could, because we had 10 children. Yeah, right. you know? And what was your relationship like with her? Was she kind of like the, the the gypsy stage mom stereotype? Oh, she was she was heavy. You 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 had to listen to mom. And she did everything. She did our managing, she did, built our costumes, she'd sew our costumes in. We'd wait around, you know, while she was on the on the on his C'est quand la robe va être finie quand, you know? Right. The poor woman. Yeah. I mean she died at forty seven, eh? Yeah. Ten children, she would have had sixteen. But what an incredible inspiration. And um it was hard because, you know, I was little. I was the littlest one. And I remember going into this, uh, around three or four years old, into this parish where my mother had a show with her aunt and uncle. And the priest walked in and he saw me on the stage. He says, you are not making that child sing on stage. He says, no, no, no. She's just having fun. She won't be on the show. So he goes away and he says, are you kidding me? She's the one that brings in the money. <laughs> that was funny. And when did you come to Montreal? How 1960. 1960. Okay. Well, there was a talent scout saw yeah. my sisters and I and he said to my mother you should come to Montreal yeah. your girls would make $25 each a week well and that was like that was it for my yeah, mom yeah. she took the 10 kids put them in a car you know they're sticking out like the you know that movie wow. the whole family moved wow then we ended up at our grandmother's who had 16 children and when you'd come home at night after the nightclub you know I was 8 years yeah. old at nightclub we'd arrive at my grandmother's and they're 16 right and there was about 16. 5 or 6 that sang in the nightclub so we'd sleep on the floor and you'd arrive in the morning and you'd see these bodies all over the floors just sleeping yeah. because there was no which other place which part of the city was that uh, Berry and uh, Dorchester. That's that's where la maison des uh, des des pour les gens le, qui ont pas d'argent qui pour manger la yeah, maison des pères uh, des pères yeah. la maison around des pères there. yeah the so when you when you when you when you go around there today because it's cl- every time it's I close think of my to like the gay village it's close every to Montreal's time, gay village every time I think of her and then we lived on Saint Christophe yeah on the third floor which burnt down yeah a couple of times and but then you reached a point where you were starting to be the one standing out and wanting your own independence. Well, the and thing is, is that, that we had television shows at CBC, you know, Joël Denim, Pierre Lalonde, and all that. And then at one point, CBC saw me and they said, la petite, encore. Tu sais, maman used to say that, la petite est bonne. That's why I became strong. And they said, we'd like to have her on a TV show. And it was called Music Hop and Discotheque. Two shows a week on CBC, okay, where I would do all the covers in French on one show, in English on the other, Okay. Is that you, amazing? You were kind of the first one to do that. First one Friend, to do French that. French and English. Yeah. 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 And uh, at one point, you know, I was making money. Yeah. And I'm I'm cold, getting money. close to 18. And mom, I used to give all my mother to my money to my mother. Of course, we were 10. You know, she right. needed it. But I used to say, "This is my money, and mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna have it one day." So I finally ran away from home. Poor mom. Yeah. You know, almost killed there, her. But there's a singer who told you you don't have to give your money to your mom. Yeah, <laughs> Chantal Renaud, yeah. who was married to a uh, prime. Yeah, Bernard Landry. Bernard yeah. Bernard Landry. She is, yeah. And she says, "You know, there are laws. You've been singing since you're three. Mm. You, you're allowed to keep your money." So I like was like, was because eventually you weren't a disco queen yet, but you, no. that's kind of who you became in the late seventies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you feel that this this drive for independence was what brought you there, to sort of brought you to where you were at the time? Well, I don't know. I I always loved dancing, and uh, you know if you remember the first time you see me dancing is in a cage with Joël Denis. <laughs> Let he's her got, out of the cage. He's got, he's got a whip and he's singing Oh my God. Hey, this is, hey, today hey, there would hey, be... Lolita. Da, 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 da. You remember that song? <laughs> anyway, I'm in the cage and he's got me in the cage oh and he's whipping God. around. Things have changed. <laughs> yeah, oh, things, things have, have changed. changed. I mean, yeah. yeah, it's like the costumes I used to wear. I was practically naked. You can't yeah. do that no, anymore, you know? And it's like switching around. Like some things are okay and some things are not right. okay. It's really weird. But you reach this moment, um, you know, in the mid to late seventies, where like the mega stardom happened. Yeah, my own TV show. It was Your own big. TV show. The biggest selling variety show Canada has ed- had ever had since Wayne and Schuster. Yeah. yeah. And you're from New York to LA, going yeah. number one Around all the over the world: Japan, yeah. Australia, Germany, yeah. everywhere. What was that time like for you? Because we, I think there's a tendency, and I do it too, to glamorize 
the disco era well, and the late seventies. Like and... disco and Montreal are like so connected. Uh, yeah, it was, it like was, a disco... I was at the right time yeah. at the right moment. You were like the queen in like the disco capital. Yeah, and I often say, you know, I didn't have that many hits. You know, what's yeah. the big deal? But my lawyer George Sand told me, he says, you know what, you marked a time, yeah. Yeah. and that sort of touched me. And I, yeah. if and I think it's true because I'm still here and people are still talking to me right. about it. But when I was doing that tour in Japan and everywhere, it was a zoo. I was like a zombie. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you go to Japan, you arrive in the morning, you did 16 hours, and they want you. They, there's like 20 uh, photographers and people doing interviews. Yeah, a, a good thing I was younger. You right. know, uh, it was hard. And my TV show, I never saw. I never saw my TV show when I was doing it. I saw it two years later. Right. You know. Well, in the documentary, you sort of allude to as you're talking about putting this new album together of songs. You allude to a time where you weren't really in control of no, I was the never material. In control. So what but was all that those like? Albums. Because what was normal. Al- it was a normal thing. Right. But I remember I used to fight a lot, or or be. I used to have a. I used to give them a lot of resistance and then they used to say well she you know who does she think she is I trop bossy I trop si trop so in those days a woman doing that was like unheard of right. you know yeah, but you're... in 2018 these women are yeah. ces femmes qui nous inspirent ben, you know they're inspiring women que, yeah. pour ça pour un moment dit, enough is enough right. and I want to take over and this will be the first time I take over if I do this album you know it's actually offered a studio for nothing album. when I do the manifest. album if I get the money manifest yeah. Yeah. when you do the album when when I, it's going to happen <laughs> yeah it, it is. will and somebody already offered me the studio for nothing but they want to take all my publishing Right, and I said I done that. I did no, that all my life. I gave it, it all my life because you did I write a lot. Yeah, I, mean, I did, but people don't know that I do. You know, here and there, little pops. But this will be the first time that I write my own music on a whole album. It's it's it, it takes it takes a lot of courage. Yeah, and I believe in it. And every time I sing a little bit of things to my to the people, they go. This is ridiculous. And there was a, a Guy a Guy Saint Ange. I went to his studio one day. Yeah. He says. I can't believe you wrote this. How come you haven't taken yeah. it out? And he said, nobody knows who you are. And is this out, is what I'm is trying to fear? do. Is it out of fear? Fear, fear of not pleasing, not being good mm-hmm. enough, mm-hmm. not not believing in myself because I don't write music, you know. But I have a billion melodies in mm-hmm. my head, and um, and in the documentary, there's this song, "Sweet Embrace," yes. that you sing in the at the end. <laughs> don't say the name. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm letting you say what you want to say. But like, it could be about it's about yeah. a rock star in Montreal. Yeah. It could be any rock yeah. star. And I even told him he hasn't heard the word heard the words yet. Yeah. I don't know if you like him, yeah. but it goes for every rock star. And it's so much fun. Do and you want to sh- share a little bit of that? Should I? Yeah. yeah. If you want but to. But it's not out, eh? No, we know. But let's, let's show people what what they can have if they yeah. contribute okay, to this campaign. I'm not going to do the melody yet, yeah, okay? Yeah, you have okay. to. Just... Somebody, do I do the whole thing? Just do it. Give so, us a dramatic... Okay. Somebody told me you were... Oh, no, I'm doing the melody now. It's okay, you don't have Somebody to. told me you were blue and you were drinking whiskey, too. You were talking on the phone, said you were tired of being alone. I know you miss my sweet embrace. Mm. You may be driving mm. your fast cars, and we all know you're a superstar. With all those young girls on your lap, breathing down your sexy back, I know you miss my sweet embrace. Now, I don't know if I can say the rest. You can. Okay. Uh, somebody saw you take a fall, dick wet and whiskey breath and all. Whoa. Tired of picking up the pieces, busy writing my own thesis on fallen angels and pretty dolls. That is amazing. amazing. Thank you, Patsy. <laughs> we need this we album. We need this album. We really need I this said, album. If Amy, Winehouse, if Amy Winehouse can say dick, so can I. Yeah. Okay? Uh, you I've got it. more you experience. <laughs> <laughs> One thing also is, is is your taste is really current. It's like you you love Rihanna. You love oh, Adele. God, you love, Rihanna, you know, there's just like yeah. you're just drawn to. But I've always been, I've always been with the black and the soul music. Look, I did James Brown's first, you know, uh, first yeah, part. You, you opened for him. I mean, wow. I mean, in those days, I was, it was 1964. I thought it was 84. It was 64. What? You opened for James Brown? Yeah. 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 I didn't, know des that. Arts. I didn't know Place that. Place des Arts and um, the Massey Hall in Toronto, which I got tomatoes uh, thrown at me. And he got up and said, get up, get on up. <laughs> and give a big <laughs> hand to Miss Patsy Gallant because he was really upset that people yeah. did that. Yeah. So I was the first white girl that ever sang with right. him. So it was like really shocking to them. You and James Brown is a yeah. trip. I rem- the first time I, I saw you was in Yellowknife, which oh, is wow. a film That's that came heavy. out in 2002, uh, directed by... 
Uh, Rodrigue Jean, who's also Acadian. Acadian. Yeah. He called me in Paris. I left I left uh, Starmania to do this show, and he actually wrote the part for me. Yeah, and you sing, you, you, you play a singer in these, like, CD dive bars, clubs. Yeah, on road the, movie, yeah. On really the way to... Psychological thriller. Yeah, yeah. To, yeah. To, to the yellow knife and... Yeah. And you sing Sugar Lady. Sugar uh, Daddy. Sugar Daddy. <laughs> yeah. In, in, in several scenes in the movie. Yeah. How was that experience? Yeah, but no, there's a better experience. Go for it. Because he had written his music for the movie. Yeah. And I when he when I read the script, which yeah. was pretty scary, I said, you know, I have and this is the first time I brought out my stuff. I said, I have stuff written mm. that would fit your movie mu- movie. Would you like to hear it? And he heard it, and he went nuts. And he took all mm. my music and put it in the film. Yeah. Now, that stuff has never been recorded, and yeah. this is my dream. Yeah. You know? One is called Ain't No Way to Treat a Woman. Yeah. And, and Save My Soul. Save My Soul. That's one yeah. of them. But look, we did it at Le Jutra. When I, when I was nominated, for first of all, when they called me in Paris, they said, we want you to do that song that you wrote mm-hmm. on the piano, yeah. a cappella, which I did a cappella in the movie. Mm-hmm. And they said, we want you to do it, but we're going to get you a band and... A whole gospel thing. I was really excited. So I came in. I was doing Cindy in Paris at the time. Yeah. And I was either, I was able to free myself to come to Le Jutra to sing this. Right. They called me a week later. They said, guess what? You're not just going to sing. You're nominated. Wow. You're nominated Amazing. as an actress. Yeah. And I had told Rodrigue, if I come out of this film and people say, I saw the singer in the film, yeah. I will be very disappointed. Mm-hmm. I oh, want I them s- to see the actress I in the film. I saw the actress, definitely. And, you know, I had, you know, my chops were learned with John Strasberg at the National Film Board for two years, solid. I mean, he lived in my house and taught me. But then I got got so busy being just a singer. Right. But those things always also- helped. Singing in musicals is the there's same, you know same thing. Same he said thing. one day you're going to eat, need your acting chops. Yeah, yeah. And boy, that was the day when I did Yellowknife. I'm but so grateful. It's so amazing to see what a varied career you've had. Mm-hmm. You know, talking about the movie and music and musical comedy and and all of it, and you just keep going. And one thing that I thought was really interesting in the documentary is just sort of your relationship to the career and the money side of things and just living in the moment Mm -hmm. and just like you said it in the movie like (laughs) i spend and i want to live while i'm while i'm healthy but you also have faith that it's going to work out well it's it's a real i have it's it's a very uh, uh, the relationship with money is really weird even my son said you're crazy mom i said i know i know but something always comes up until you know you don't get your health as long as i have my health and my voice I'm going to live, okay? Because you never know when you're going to get money in this business. Anyway, right. you, you one month, you three months, four months without money. But something happens, you know? And uh, I've always lived that way. So why should I change now, yeah. you know? It worked. That's only gonna stre- <laughs> it's only going to stress but, me more. But Patsy, what you have to do is try is very different. What? She's very, like, yeah, frugal. And, I'm the opposite. Yeah. Well, it's out of fear, yeah. you know. Um, well, I and, have fear, but yeah. it's interesting. I'm also, be- stupid. <laughs> <laughs> because you, you know, obviously the money, the money is kind of always there for everyone. But like, you know, the relationship with your mom on the train, and then sugar daddy is a little bit about that. That's a little there's, bit about money, and I mean. Oh no, I never th- thought of it that way. I didn't even know what sugar daddy <laughs> meant at the time. You know, no, <laughs> really? I know. Really? Oh, yeah, in, in in Mexico, they they used to, to make the children sing the Papa de Azuca because it was like my I love my daddy. Oh, you know, right. little children love right. their daddy. Right. So the kids didn't know what sugar daddy meant either. They just thought it was like <laughs> de bonbon. Now I know it's like something much more. You know, like uh, older men with younger women. And, and then in but, the nineties, you 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 know, one really good job was working with. Like, Oh, yeah, and, that was and, that and was the, uh, big part of how, my life. How did you initially meet Luc? Well, he had seen me uh, in uh, Edith Piaf. I was doing Edith Piaf at uh, the Place des Arts. Uh, an homage to Edith Piaf where yeah. I was made up like her yeah, and everything. Yeah. And you couldn't even recognize yeah. me. I do it differently now. And he said, oh, my God, I got to talk to Patsy. She'd be great for, for Starmania again, which I didn't know. He had chosen me. 15 years earlier, I was doing Michel Drucker in France. I had from yeah. New York to L.A. I was doing a two-year world tour. the thing is, Starmania was the the sort of like peak musical, like disco musical in the 70s. So yeah. it's really rock, int- musical. rock musical. But like there was this like very, like there was like this like gl- glitter about it. Well, it's, it's just it that out. it was the first yeah. musical written originally in, in French, French. Okay. Yeah. As opposed to being yeah. uh, adapted, tra- right. adapted. And when he saw me on... Uh, 
Michel Drucker, I'm doing from New York to L.A., and Michel Berger is still alive because yeah. he wrote it with him. And he said, this be a good singer to do uh, Stella. And he said, well, she's a great singer. Sure, let's have her. I never found out about it. I went on right. tour for two years. They called my manager, and they said, well, we don't know what Star Mania is. It was just starting. And she says, she can't. She's on a, a world tour for two years. Right. Fifteen years later, he comes to get me. When he sees me as Piaf, I do the audition. And, you know, in Montreal, we have good singers. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm talking yeah. from Nanette to, to uh, uh, Marie-Denise Pelletier to all those great singers. They all pass. Yeah. When I was there, he says, Patsy, would you sing a, a PF song for me? Because I missed your show and I really regret it. And I sang L'hymne de l'amour. And he had tears in his eyes. And he turned around and says, can you do Stella like that? Mm. I said, now I know what you want. Give me direction. Mm, right. I'm an actress. Yeah. I did it. Three days later, I had the role. I it's, was in Paris. It's interesting to sort of, it just kind of occurred to me now, the the roles that you've played in an acting dimension, like Stella. And, Nonsense. And then the stepmother the, in the, oh, yeah. Cindy. And then the character that you play in Yellowknife. You know, you're sort of being confronted with the idea that people have of like the the star in a moment of mm. vulnerability you know and it's an image that you that you play with but it's not really you at the same time you know oh i can be vulnerable i mean I'm, i wouldn't be i wouldn't sing if i wasn't vul- the way i do or i wouldn't write the way i do if i wasn't vulnerable we're 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 in a business that is just <laughs> total vulnerability. I mean, yeah. ask my son. You know, when you pass auditions and you know you're good, but you don't get it because your eyes are not green, or you're not right. tall enough, or you're not this enough, or you're not that enough. And boy, it's you know what? It's harder for our younger people. I mean, he says, "Mom, you're going to be seventy. You're working more than me." And it's true. It's like, okay, I have a long yeah, but I could not be there. I could be the kind of person they don't want to see. Right. And I make it a point to toujours. Uh, être en avant de mon temps parce que tu l'as dit mm-hmm. tout à l'heure I like to be I like I like everything that's new I, I lo- even in clothes and everything I, yeah. t- I try to learn all the time I'm in a learning process all the time you're, you're, I'm never good enough right. you know and, and that's my drive that's my passion and that's what the kids have to do the kids have it too easy today when you go on on Star Academy which I, I adore too it's a good it's got it's good sides right. and it's and, bad right. sides and when I did it in Paris I did it in front of 300 million viewers. I was a judge, okay? It went from La Réunion to Les Seychelles to Lebanon to Morocco, every French uh, francophonie right. in, in, in the world. The yeah. world. Yeah. And there's a girl there that was on the show, and I said, one day they're going to have a live suicide. It wow. was so heavy. Wow. And and it really, I just felt for these kids. And yeah. I said, I hope my son never does that because it's too heavy. I mean, especially in Paris, it was really, in France, How, it was really. When you see images of yourself, you know, like in the 60s and 70s, what would you tell yourself? What do you wish you knew at the time that you've learned? I don't know. I wouldn't change a thing. You wouldn't change one thing? No. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, that, 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 that's how to live yeah, life, yeah. though. Is it? It, okay. it is how I to live so. life. It is really inspiring. Yeah. No, maybe just shut up once in a while, but uh, <laughs> I can't help that either. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, and you just keep hustling. Like uh, I'm such a hustler. Yeah. I mean, do, do they know that I'm on Facebook and yes. Instagram and <laughs> so Tweety Bird? Let's talk about that. Tweety Bird. <laughs> Tweety Bird. I call it Tweety Bird. So you've you've joined the social media craziness, so everyone can find you on yeah. Instagram, Tweety Bird, Facebook. <laughs> How do, do you feel have, about I ha- the social? I have help. I have help. Yeah. But, well, it's it's not something that I'm comfortable with right. because it scares me because it's it's you know it's not my generation, and I barely know how to do it. In fact, I just did a video to tell people how to do it, right. which I still don't know. But I, <laughs> I, I told them there was a little red square and you just click and it opens up and it's wonderful. And it is wonderful. I'm working with a wonderful guy called um, Joseph-Antoine Clavet who's doing my uh, social media right now for my uh, for my um, the, campaign. The, the, the campaign for yeah. the social media. And I also have uh, Ashad Khan and Sergio Kirby that did my mm. um my uh, documentary that helped me do the little film in there. Yeah. I have friends helping me. They're really, really wonderful. Well, we want you to. S- we want to see yeah. this dream come true for it you. It is a dream, yeah. I, and, and I want to do it my way. Yeah. I want to. I want to be part of every part from the, the, the from the video to the music to the arrangements to everything. I want to get the best artisan, the best 
producer with me, the best musicians, the best studio, the best costumes. Yeah. I'm going to get it. I've got to get you it you before deserve. I leave. Get that ball. Yeah. Get, get that, that ball, ball. Patsy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, I love you so much. Thank Thanks. you we love so you. You guys much for awesome. coming. I love you we, too. Yeah. Thank you so, thank you so much. much for coming, Patsy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you to everybody. Yeah. I, this is like website, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is great.